Enchanting in Minecraft may seem pretty straightforward, but chances are that you've been enchanting your swords wrong in Minecraft. Having a good sword can give you the best possible advantage in combat. However, most players make basic mistakes that make their weapons far less effective. In this video, we're going to start off by conducting some experiments to better understand what each enchantment does in order to decide which ones are truly the best for combat. We'll even be talking a bit about the controversial Knockback 2 enchantment and whether or not you should actually use it. After that, we'll go into more detail about how exactly you can get these enchantments, because despite how simple it sounds, there's a very specific way you have to do it in order for it to work. Enough talk, let's get into the video. To begin our experiments, we'll start by testing the various sharpness enchantments available for a sword. These consist of Bane of Arthropod, Smite, and the sharpness enchantment we all know and love. Also, don't try to put all three of these on one sword, because you can't. By far the most useful of these, Bane of Arthropods allows you to deal more damage to mobs like spiders and bees, which you can one-shot with sharpness 5 anyways. There's literally no reason to use this enchantment. I mean, you can put it on your wooden hoe if you want, but please do not bring this one into combat. I'm not going to even bother collecting data for this one because I'm quite embarrassed to have spent so much time on this enchantment already. Let's move on to something else. Smite is marginally more useful than Bane of Arthropods. It basically does more damage to undead things in the game, like zombies, skeletons, or even wither bosses. So I guess it can be useful in some scenarios, but just because it's useful in certain scenarios doesn't mean you should actually use it. For the sake of consistency, I did give this enchantment the privilege of actually testing it, and it does perform better against the Wither boss than when using normal sharpness. More specifically, Smite adds 2.5 HP or 1.5 hearts per level added to a weapon, basically allowing you to one-shot zombies and skeletons. However, it does not do extra damage to players, which is normally the bigger concern. Finally, we get onto an enchantment that isn't just hot guard garbage, Sharpness 5. Sharpness increases a weapon's overall damage by 1 HP for the first level, followed by half an HP or a quarter of a heart per each subsequent level added. This does affect players, which is far more useful in combat. Please, use sharpness on your swords and axes if you haven't been doing this already. There's gotta be at least somebody watching this video who's just now realizing that they've been using Bane of Arthropods 5 on their sword this whole time. Now let's move on to some of the other enchantments. Unbreaking and Mending don't need much explaining. Unbreaking just makes your tools last longer, and Mending causes them to regenerate durability when you collect experience. Keep in mind though that you can only really get large quantities of Mending books through villagers. Looting 3 is a bit more interesting. The enchantment, put simply, increases the number of valuable drops you get from killing a mob. According to the Minecraft wiki, looting increases the maximum number of items for most common drops by one per level, and also increases the chance of rare drops and equipment by one percentage point per level. Basically, if you want more string and zombie flesh, or a higher chance to get a wither skull from wither skeleton, looting can do the job. Keep in mind, however, that having looting 3 on your main sword will cause your inventory to be constantly filled with wonderful items everyone wants, like spider eyes, string, bones, and zombie flesh. Personally, I don't try too hard to put looting on my sword for this very reason, but it can prove very useful if you're grinding for drops. Sweeping Edge 3 is very useful in XP farms and in sticky situations where you have to dispose of multiple mobs at once. Higher levels of Sweeping Edge increase the amount of damage a sword sweeping attack will do. Pretty straightforward. Fire Aspect is an enchantment you will almost always want on a sword. Fire Aspect 2 sets whatever mob or player you hit on fire, which can be really useful because they'll continue taking damage after being hit. The Hurt Cam and Fire Overlay in Minecraft can be really annoying to deal with, and constantly taking damage disrupts your momentum, meaning that Fire Aspect can be extremely irritating to fight against. If you've watched my 1.16 PvP video, which you totally should not, you'll know just how important momentum is due to its role in player reach. Everything else about sword enchantments is pretty straightforward, except for when it comes to the controversial Knockback 2 enchantment. For years, it has been debated whether or not you should use it on your swords, and now most of the player base absolutely absolutely despises it. However, I believe that knockback gets a lot more hate than it deserves. Before you guys start bullying me in the comments, let's go into more detail about the pros and cons of knockback. Common argument against knockback is that it puts your opponent, whether it be a player or a hostile mob, farther away from you, where it takes more effort to land a second hit. Many players find this extremely annoying and choose to avoid knockback at all costs. However, this can be really useful in many situations. If you're being attacked by several players or mobs at once, knockback allows you to put distance with between yourself and the aggressors, preventing them from attacking you all at once where you would be quickly overwhelmed. But should you use it in 1.16? Personally, I think you should. Here's why. 
Generally, maxed out combat in Minecraft survival includes full enchanted netherite. The quirk with netherite is that it provides little to no improvements in actual protection when it compared to diamond armor. However, it greatly reduces knockback to the point where almost none is taken at all. This typically means that netherite combat turns out to be a slugfest of who can land the most crits without missing. Since there's nearly no knockback involved, it's almost all accuracy and health management. Still not seeing the connection? That's okay. If you've seen my video in 1.16 PvP, which oh my gosh, do not watch it, you'd know about a specific section that discusses the momentum reach mechanic. The gist of it is that a player being knocked backwards has slightly less reach than a player sprinting forwards. This is utilized commonly in 1.8 PvP to hold combos for long periods of time and often looks like reach hacks from an opponent's perspective. What if I told you that you can take advantage of this mechanic in 1.16 netherite PvP using, you guessed it, the knockback enchantment. This added bit of knockback somewhat counteracts the knockback resistance of netherite armor, allowing you to actually take advantage of the momentum reach mechanic. With this, combined with sprint resetting, you can repeatedly land hits on your opponent while knocking them backwards, forcing them onto the defensive. I discovered this recently while dueling a friend who did not have knockback too, and I absolutely love this enchantment now. One downside is that it makes it a bit more difficult to land crit combos, especially when your opponent is fleeing. However, my personal style of PvP involves a lot more strafing and sprint hitting, so knockback is a great way to get the better of players who focus mainly on crits. Personally, I like it, and would recommend you put aside your prejudice and give knockback a chance in your style of PvP. Now that you know more about what each enchantment actually does, you probably want to use almost all of them. The problem with this is that an anvil has its limitations when making a fully maxed out sword. You get to a point where adding another necessary book to your sword becomes way too expensive to complete in survival Minecraft. There's a very specific way you have to do this in order to get a sword with the maximum enchants at the lowest XP cost. When making a sword, most people tend to just add books to the sword until it becomes too expensive to complete with an anvil. The problem with this is that any item in Minecraft Minecraft can only be edited in an anvil six times before it becomes too expensive. Swords have seven exclusive enchantments. I bet you can see the problem here. However, there are a few things you can do to get around this. The first method is to have all of your maxed out books prepared beforehand and combine them with each other in pairs before eventually adding them to the sword. However, this will not work unless all the books are maxed out by default. You can't combine books to make the maxed out versions before using this method as it counts as an edit and will make it impossible to add every enchantment. That means that this will probably only work if you have villagers available who can sell you maxed out books. You can also take the route of using an enchantment table to get some or most of the enchantments needed. You can sometimes get upwards of two maxed out enchantments from an enchantment table when using a sword or a book. This is useful because enchanting an item doesn't count as an edit with an anvil, so you can get multiple maxed out enchantments without contributing to the item's anvil use limit. Also, each level 30 enchantment only costs you three levels and a little bit of lapis, so it's probably a lot cheaper to combine a bunch of swords together with a few books than to go through the effort to set up villager trades and use 60 plus levels of experience. Congratulations! You now have the best sword possible in Minecraft. Almost. Now you just need skills behind that sword. So maybe watch my video in 1.16 PvP. As you can see, I gave up on the reverse psychology thing.